On June 30th, 2013, Bradley Manning, a U.S. Army private who leaked a number of classified documents, was convicted of seven out of eight espionage charges, five theft charges, two computer fraud charges, five military counts of violating a lawful general regulation, and one charge of wanton publication of intelligence on the internet. Though he was not found guilty of the aiding the enemy charges, he still faces up to 136 years in prison. Mainstream media has focused people's attention on a set of leaked cables released by Manning, which were really little more than diplomatic gossip. For example, there was one that described former Australian Prime Minister Kevin Root as a mistake-prone control freak. However, the leak that really made waves and which got the attention of the public was the video which came to be known as Collateral Murder. This is the video which depicted an Apache helicopter crew intentionally gunning down a crowd of unarmed civilians. These civilians just happened to be reporters. The grand irony here is that while Bradley Manning has spent over three years in prison already for releasing this footage, 11 months of this in solitary confinement, the men who actually gunned down the civilians were not charged with any crime. To add insult to injury, a number of prominent U.S. politicians actually had the gall to issue public statements condemning Manning. An example of this was the joint statement made by the Democratic and Republican leaders of the U.S. House of Representatives Intelligence Committee after the ruling, which claimed that, quote, justice had been served and that Manning harmed our national security, violated the public's trust, and now stands convicted of multiple serious crimes. Not surprisingly, this statement was put forward by Chairman Mike Rogers, a Republican, and Democrat Dutch Ruppersberger, who just happened to have been two of the most ardent backers of the CISPA Internet Security Bill. So, what does this Bradley Manning case tell us about America? Well, let's put this into context. We have Bush, Cheney, and their cronies who fabricate stories of weapons of mass destruction to get us to invade Iraq, the result of which was well over a million civilians dead, countless wounded, and an entire nation left in ruins. Are Bush and Cheney in jail? No, of course not. They're still out walking free like nothing ever happened. Bush even got a library named after him. Then we have Clinton, who kept Iraq under draconian sanctions for the entire eight years he was in office, knowing full well that hundreds of thousands of children were dying as a result. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. Clinton's not behind bars, nor is Madeleine Albright or Vice President Gore. In fact, Clinton and Gore still get to prance around like humanitarians. They travel around the world giving speeches and basking in the adoration of the uninformed. Then we have Obama, a man who came into office on promises of hope and change, transparency and justice, a Nobel Peace Prize winner to boot, who instead expanded Bush's drone wars, expanded the Patriot Act by signing the NDAA of 2012 and 2013, who invaded Libya and has been sending weapons and money to violent extremists in Syria, not to mention his involvement in Operation Fast and Furious, in which the U.S. government intentionally smuggled thousands of guns to Mexican drug cartels, guns which have been used in hundreds, if not thousands, of murders on both sides of the border. Yet, he's not facing charges. Nope, in fact, he and his wife are quite happily taking multi-million dollar vacations with your tax dollars. Bradley Manning was found guilty of 20 charges and faces up to 136 years in prison. Yet these mass murdering scumbags that like to pass themselves off as leaders get bodyguards for life, a monthly paycheck for life which equals out to about $200,000 a year, plus $96,000 a year for a small office staff. Taxpayers also pick up the tab for other expenses like staff benefits, travel, office space, and postage. So what does that tell us? That tells us that justice in America has nothing to do with morality and everything to do with money and power. These narcissistic control freaks at the wheel have no problem causing the deaths of millions of civilians. But anyone who tarnishes their precious little image, anyone who dares expose even a fraction of their crimes to the public, is a traitor and a threat to national security. Listening to these politicians comment on the Manning case is like getting a lecture on ethics from Goebbels or Stalin. When exposing war crimes is rewarded with jail time, while mass murderers walk free, it's time to acknowledge that the insane are running the asylum. America isn't becoming a police state. It already is one. If you'd like more videos like this, subscribe to Storm Clouds Gathering on YouTube. For updates and bonus content, follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash stormcloudsgathering, on Twitter at Collapse Updates, and our website is stormcloudsgathering.com.